Hi everyone, I am Susan Jacob and in this video I am going to show you a case where we have done femtosecond laser assisted talc. Now the femtosecond laser can be used in various ways uh, for deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. It can be used to just make the side cut or the side cut and the lamellar cut. In this case I am using the interlace machine and this is the donor eye where I am doing a side cut alone which is circular in pattern. And here is the same uh, side cut that is now being applied to the host cornea or the patient's cornea. So uh, the, the reason that uh, this is safe to do so is because you can get a uniform uh, depth of cut on all sides without accidentally uh, perforating through. The machine can be programmed to cut at around 80% of the minimum depth in the uh, thinnest optic zone and therefore you can avoid accidental perforation as could happen with a manual refine. So you can see that the uh, femtosecond laser cut is easily opened up in the donor cornea and then uh, the rest of the surgery proceeds as usual. Uh, you go in with a 26 gauge needle and use uh, it to create this uh, big bubble. The type 1 big bubble can be seen forming and expanding and you can see that the 26 gauge needle was uh, bent with the bevel down. Uh, a side port blade is made and the antechamber is decompressed. Uh, you can put in a little bit of myocol to constrict the pupil in order to avoid accidental damage to the uh, lens. The anterior stroma is then debulked and this is done with the uh, crescent blade taking care that you don't go through the deeper stroma. The big bubble is now punctured using a 15 degree uh, blade which is held with the uh, sharp side facing up and uh, an incision that is large enough to allow viscoelastic to be instilled is made. This cut needs to be made rapidly in order to avoid the air from uh, suddenly decompressing out and the tip of the blade accidentally touching the desmus membrane and thereby perforating it. So you can see that I have again gone and expanded the uh, big bubble space with viscoelastic uh, in order to allow me adequate space to uh, cut the corneal stroma into four quadrants. Uh, the air bubble has come back to the center of the anterior chamber as can be seen through that cut and this shows that uh, the big bubble space has again collapsed obviously because of the large cuts on the residual stroma above it and uh, therefore you do need to be careful while dissecting. Uh, a blunt vanas scissor should be used and uh, uh, this should be a curved venous and it should be taken care that the tip of the venous doesn't go and nick the residual predesmith layer and desmith membrane accidentally. Once the uh, residual stroma has been cut into four quadrants, each quadrant is then removed using the same vena scissors, again taking all the precautions that were mentioned previously. Uh, the, uh, the tip of the vena should not be pointed downward so that it doesn't accidentally snag on the residual predesmith and desmith membrane. So we turn our attention back to the donor eye now and uh, the dissection is easily completed. Here the cut with the femtosecond laser is full thickness unlike the host cornea where it is not uh, made as a full thickness. So the desmus membrane has been stained with trypan blue and it can be easily stripped off and the donor cornea is then placed on the recipient bed after the viscoelastic is washed off and it is then sutured into place. In this case, I am using a combination of interrupted and continuous sutures. I also use the Melanie's intraoperative keratometry uh, to uh, assess uh, astigmatism and adjust it if required. So this is the patient seen at the end of the case uh, on the table. And here is the postoperative day one uncorrected visual acuity, uh, which is uh, six nine, a clear cornea and uh, and uh, quiet eye as can be seen here. I do hope this video was useful to watch and learn from. Thank you so much.